All right, here's a little film we made back in 1977. I'm going to start off here with uh, the Long Beach Freeformer Contest of, of that same year. Uh, they had a number of events, slalom, freestyle, 360s, high jump. I think I traveled down there with Peyton Huff. This is Bob Jarvis spinning some 360s. He rode for Brewer. He won that day. I think he spun 12. Bob is now a yacht salesman in Newport Beach, I believe. He's doing him one-footed there, as you can see. I think you got a minute to spin as many as you could. That there is Chris Chappett who now owns ABEC 11, make wheels and trucks and different things. And here's the granddaddy of skateboarding, Mr. Russ Howe. You've seen Russ lately, you know he looks pretty much the same, just uh, not as much hair. Russ kind of had a background in martial arts, as you'll see in one of his falls here, how he rolls out of it. For a while, Russ held the 360 record and about 163 spins. It looks like he was still developing his technique here. This is all shot on an old Super 8 camera, that's why the quality is not real high. There's his judo roll. There's another judo roll. Russ was quite the showman and one of skateboarding's best ambassadors throughout the 70s. Now for a little slalom action. I think that's Bob Skoldberg in the blue. Not sure who's that in the yellow. Check out the pole vault pit you had to land in there. John Hudson in the white shirt. Maybe Greg Tay, Greg Tai, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. It's Bell. Finish line. This is uh, Harry Brown in the orange helmet, who he currently owns the Los Osos Fitness Center. He ended up taking out every other cone for the girls. I remember talking to Terry about it later, and she was kind of pissed off about it. You know, because some of the girls couldn't make the course, they made it easier, but it also made it more difficult to pump. As you can see, it's like watching slalom and you know, molasses. I think, uh, Judy Oyama was in this contest too, but I'm, I'm not sure which one she is here. I haven't seen her yet. We're back to the men. In the green, Mr. Bobby Piercy. Not only was he fast, he was stylish. Back over to the uh, barrel jump. This is a guy named Fred Flavel. I think he set the record in 77. Not on that jump. Move over to the high jump. I think this guy's name is Jerry Patterson. Pretty good jumper. He had to land and then roll a certain number of feet. There was a line to, to be counted as a fair jump. This is Bob Moore, the great skater in the 60s and also in the 70s. Now we switch to the uh, Morro Bay Ditch in its glory years, when all three levels were clean and still there. This is Bobby the Bird Senate, Central Coast rider. The guy in the striped shirt there walking up is Van Carraza. He lives in the area, teaches surfing. I believe this is Joe Potter, he just went by. He was the oldest guy there back in those days. He was 
29, we thought he was in his 50s because he had a wife and kids. This is Scott Parsons, ended up writing for Hout Skateboards. Scott was probably one of the better skaters in, in this area. This is, uh, I think the guy's name is Bear. Ayukas Craig, I can't think of his last name, but wrote a longboard when nobody else did. And this goofball in the yellow outfit here is me. I was a big Bane fan. My mom made those shorts for me. I thought that was pretty cool. Except I didn't know how to kick turn. All right, this is Mike Philbin. He later skated across America with me in 1976. I'm gonna see something happen here in just a second. Boom. Mike was having a tough day, watch him here. That's his brother, Tom, in front. Uh, three guys at a time here. This ditch was originally uh, discovered by Jeff French. Him and his brother used to ride bikes in it back in the 60s. And we started skating in the 70s. We went and looked at it and found it and found the walls were still uh, there and cleaned it out. This is my best uh, imitation of a bird. This is John Newland and Kelly Boyd. I think my brother's, now my brother's in there. It took them a few tries to figure out that catamaraning just didn't work in the ditch. This guy here is probably the best skater ever on the Central Coast, especially in those days in the 70s and 80s. That's Kevin Nikolai. The kid in the yellow waiting his turn is Jeff Crow. Who in 1978 actually won Skater of the Year in a little uh, series we had. Kevin Nikolai ended up riding for Hout, had his own model. He's the first guy we ever saw do kick turns in the ditch. We thought he did them because he didn't know how to carve. But then we figured out that, oh wait a second, he's coming back up the ditch. His rides are lasting two and three times as long as ours, so we learned a quick kick turn pretty quickly. On the weekends, it was not uncommon to have 25, 30 guys skating the ditch at a time and maybe 50 people lined up watching that had walked over after getting their ice cream cones at Thrifty's. Scott Parsons here. We used to get mad at these guys because they took so long. The kid in the yellow shirt that just ducked out of the way is Kurt Biscara, who went on to drum uh, professionally on a number of uh, big name uh, albums. And that's and the guy standing on the bluff there is Jim Hall, one of the founders of Central Coast Surfboards. It was Kenny Crawl doing the parallel stance there. Got cut off by Scott. There used to be some graffiti on the ditch that said, you ride it, you paint it. I think that's the only time in my life I ever did graffiti. Nutmeg Street in Morro Bay. I think this guy's name was Kurt Downs or Chris Downs, but he was one of the early guys to bomb Nutmeg. There's this weird little dip at the bottom. You can see him get the wobs there for a sec, but he pulls it off. This guy is Kelly Lynn. And this is a skateboard park in Florida called Scatboard City. 
Ellie Lim went on to become one of the best skateboarders on the East Coast. This is a very early park. It actually opened a week before Carlsbad did. Jeff French, myself, and Mike Philbin were there after completing our cross-country trip in 1976. And uh, this 11-year-old kid was the best skater there. Mike Philbin. This was the first skateboard park we'd ever ridden. These guys were a couple brothers. I, th I think they were locals there, and they had this uh, climbing and dropping act down to a science. Surfing a very long wave. This is yours truly. Not much style. Trying to figure out how to pump. It's really hot and humid there. You take a couple runs and then go inside the pro shop and stand in front of the air conditioner for 10 minutes. Rumor was that this park was supposed to be called Skateboard City, but when the sign painter painted the sign, he forgot the E, and so they just left it and called it Skateboard City. A little slow motion here. Carbs 360. Funny to look at what skating was in 1976 and what it is now. And kids see this now and just must laugh. This is Jeff French, He's one of the guys on the cross country trip. Took him along mainly because he was 6'4. Nobody's going to mess with a 6'4 guy out on the road. special effects here. There wasn't a, a platform at the top of that wall. It was about six inches, eight inches wide. You could fall off out of the park quite easily. This is Oak Ridge Street in Los Osos, probably 1976, seven, before there were houses, just the streets. We used to have races every Sunday. Cops would actually pull up and just watch. You heard of a catamaran? Well, there's a trimaran for you. This guy's name is Vern Weigold. We weren't smart enough back then to cut the bases off the cones, so if you cut too close to the cones, it was instant death. But I think it made us all better slalom racers. Maybe this is Vern. I think the, the previous guy was actually Billy Burmeister. was a guy who got into skating for a short while, Bill Palmer from Morro Bay. Ended up quitting when he crashed at about 35 or 40 on Frederick Street in San Luis Obispo one afternoon with no shirt on. Ended up breaking three vertebrae in his back.
fellow's name was Mark King, San Luis Obispo. One of the first guys we saw do uh, parallel stance. This is the San Miguel Bowl discovered by Jeff Crow's dad back in about 75. That's Matt George. This is Jimmy Davy, a second generation Dogtown guy. This was an old pool in San Miguel that was built to entice the soldiers to come over to San Miguel from Camp Roberts back during World War II. And we found that it had cars in it and washers and dryers and there was actually a wall there dividing the deep and shallow end. We cleaned it as best we could and then when we showed up one weekend and a, old, a farmer had taken everything out for us. This is the Atascadero High School pool. We really had no clue what we were doing. This is at night. We snuck in there. The athletic director later showed up, recognized me, and asked if we were having fun. When I told him we were, he said, okay, we'll just lock the gate when you leave. Definitely wouldn't happen that way today. We were still just trying to figure things out. I'm thinking, I think I'm riding a Bane there with Road Rider 2s or 4s on it. Not real impressive. This is Peyton Huff, now living in Hawaii. Good surfer, good skater. Back in the day, the uh, all surf movies ended with a sunset, so we end our skate movie here with a sunset.